Hey, biology of rug rats. It's time to update your invertebrate uh, classification sheet and kind of prime the pump for the next uh, bit of reading that you're going to be doing out of your book. Remember, all you really got to do is do some reading, take some notes, and there's going to be a quiz that goes along with it. Uh, in the handouts that I have sent you, we're going to look over Phylum Mollusca as well as this one on uh, phylum Echinodermata. Uh, those two, that's the next bit of, of stuff. We already did worms, right? Um, okay, so what I do want to tell you is that on the worms uh, handouts here that I gave you, you can use, especially, I believe, this one here. Uh, no, it would be on this one, the annelids, that you'll use when we do the lab on uh, earthworms. You'll use this kind of stuff to help you do that life process chart. So I just want to let you, let you know that you have that. You have that available to you and it has a lot of the things that you're going to want for, uh, for filling that in. Anyway, that's on the worms phyla that I sent you. And it's got the labeled stuff for um, some of the slides that you do too. Anyway, that's coming up, I guess, next week. Um, yeah. All right. So I again, I've been watching some stuff. I've been watching some great courses and whatnot on some of these, on some of these different phyla, um, getting a little bit of information about them. And then I got a box of uh, a, a box of stuff from the sea here in the in the classroom and i'm going to send you some links to some stuff that's more interesting we're gonna um send you a link to learning about some sea snails called nudibranchs that are really cool and some stuff about echinoderms just like sea stars and sea cucumbers and some of the stuff that you don't really probably get to see very often because we live in the valley and not by the beach but if you ever do go to an aquarium or you go to uh you go to tide pools on vacation or something like that i want you to kind of know what you're looking for Okay, so get out that invertebrate sheet, and uh, we're going to scroll down here, and we've got other invertebrates, section 15D, and then starting here on 15.8. I know i got a bunch of things here. Uh, I'm going to try to just go quickly and summarize. You can always hit pause and just fill in the details. In one of the videos that I was watching, the... Uh, marine biologist was talking about the Chesapeake Bay. And if you know your geography, you know that the Chesapeake Bay is, is up there on, on the East Coast as part of like, um, what, Virginia and uh, Maryland, and then the, all the rivers that go up into that part of, of the world, Virginia and, um, what's North Virginia, I guess, West Virginia and, New Jersey and Pennsylvania and all the rivers that drain down into there. It's one of the largest uh, estuaries estuaries uh, in that part of the world. That means it's a place where uh, the fresh water from rivers and streams flows into the ocean. And so you get a mixing of, of fresh water and salt water. And many different kinds of species can live in those areas that can't live out in the deep ocean where it's super salty or up in the rivers where there isn't any salt. So this kind of mixture place. Estuary is a very interesting biome for, for um, marine uh, animals. Mollusks, there's lots of mollusks that live in there. Things like clams and oysters and mussels and scallops. I'll show you some of their shells here in a bit. But a lot of things that get used in economy to, to harvest and then the people eat. Okay, if you, you're into that kind of thing, you're into some, some of that Seafood, a lot of it comes from estuaries. So uh, about 90,000 species of mollusks, shelled animals. It's the largest phylum of marine animals. And from that other, that previous sheet, and I'll go back to it here in just a moment, we get these five characteristics here. Number one is the mantle. The mantle is a part of their internal body organs. It's like this layer, this tissue layer that secretes the shell and where the gills, the breathing apparatus is located in the shelled animal. Uh, then there's the shell, which is secreted by the mantle as protective coat, it's covering. It uh, basically, they extract calcium uh, from the seawater, from the water around them through their gills, 
and their body internal organs and whatnot and then their mantle secretes that it actually takes that and binds it with oxygen and creates the stuff called calcium carbonate and that's like the hard part of the shell it's kind of like their bones they secrete that out and uh, then they live on the inside and uh, so it keeps them safe thirdly they have a part of their internal guts they're called the visceral hump or the visceral mass um, they have like this open system inside but that's where all their all their guts are if you've ever collected clams or mussels or scallops or something you know you clean a bunch of that junk out uh, fourthly the foot that's the part that you eat there'll be some interesting videos on on uh, I think it's a scallop using its foot to get away from something you think they just kind of sit there but no, they can stick out this big muscle part and that's usually the part that you cut out and you cook and you eat it and then they have this uh, kind of uh, like a tongue with teeth this rasping organ called the radula the radula r-a-d-u-l-a -A. it's like a tongue with teeth snails have it and then these other um, mollusks have it as well. So let me go over to that. <clears throat> we'll look at the, the kind of things here. They, that's, that's how they move is by their muscular foot. They're going to stick it out of their shell. And they're going to like push. They can scoot along on one foot. Body covered by ciliated epithelium. So a lot of them have little things that are sticking out. Uh, distinct head except in bivalves, things with two shells, etc. Um, let's look at the three classes that we'll have of these. You got bivalva. A valve just means I looked it up in the dictionary. Valve is technically like just a uh, shell. Okay, it's like the technical scientific word for a shell. So you got like a scallop here. Okay, this is the same thing that is uh, for the gas station. There used to be the gas station called shell. And this is one half of it. Okay, scallops. Or got clams, um, where you know they've got like a they got like a hinge here, and then they live inside. Sorry, they live inside of the of their shell. Two, two of them bivalve. You've got then also gastropods, which uh, is one coiled shell or sometimes no shell. So you got here one like this. They oftentimes have beautiful patterns on them, but you wouldn't want to eat this one. It's poisonous. Uh, there's also some other ones where the snail would live inside of this turret shell. And then I got a version of that, the same thing that's been, been cut through. And you can see that every chamber gets a little bit bigger as it loops around. It's pretty cool. There's some, some nice math in there. But lots and lots of things that are like that that you see uh, with shells are probably some type of snail. The gastropods uh, but we also got slugs and we've got conches and then there's nudibranchs which are like these giant sea snail things okay well they, they can be this big but they can be like up to a foot long and they got they're very very colorful and they have their gills kind of behind their heart rather than in front of their heart and they're sticking up like like a patch of broccoli or something off of their off of their backs okay so you see a video about those and then cep cephalopods um, no external shell. Um, soft, you know, cephalopod means the foot head, um, means head foot. Octopus, squids, which actually have a shell on the inside of the, the head portion. And um, I don't know if you've ever done a dissection with squid. I guess Bethan has. She's seen that. It's kind of like this thin, like, I don't know, it's kind of like a feather, but it's in its stiffness but this thin shell type thing that's on the inside that gives it a little bit more like a backbone kind of not a backbone but a little bit more structure um nautilus and there'll be some others on the list so uh here's a clam clam has two parts it's a bivalve and so you can see pointing to a valve or the shell and then they open it up at the hinge and they can see some of the guts there's the foot it can stick it out of the shell and push through the water there's this gill structures, digestive gland, stomach, esophagus, mouth, all that kind of stuff, palps. That's all like eating apparatus. And then heart, kidney, anus, excurrent siphon, incurrent siphon. So suck water in, push it over its gills and its internal organs, and then it'll push that out, the excurrent siphon. I mean, squid have that too, right? They can pull water in underneath their mantle. 
and then push water out a siphon to help propel it. They also have an ink pouch there so they can push out water and ink and kind of hide in the in the mess. Uh, nerve cord, gills, valve, mantle, etc. Okay, so all that's kind of like hanging out inside of their guts, but you probably, if you like that stuff, you're going to want to eat the foot. Okay, that's um, that's those guys. So we've got uh, bivalvia. This should be an eye there. Two-shelled animals. Um, clams, oysters, mussels, and scallops. The cool thing about them is that in-current, out-current system. They're constantly pulling water in, uh, filtering out the nutrients, and then shooting out the water. The Chesapeake Bay, all well, the water coming in there is, is about 15 trillion gallons of water in that estuary that the clams, oysters, mussels, and scallops in the Chesapeake Bay filter that whole thing every three to four days. I just think that's fascinating. That's like crazy amount of filtering with these things. There's lots of them. Second, we got gastropoda, the stomach, foot, mollusks, snails, slugs, and the nudibranchs. And then uh, thirdly, the cephalopods, the head, foot, mollusks, squid, which uh, when you come in, I can show you the dissection guide and the insides of the thing. Octopus, which is very smart and uh, tasty. Uh, if you had the octopus legs, they're, they're not bad. The nautilus, which makes this beautiful shell with a Archimedes spiral, golden ratio spiral in all its sections. Uh, then, then kind of like the squid thing sticks out the end of the shell. And cuttlefish with lots and lots and lots of legs. If you've read uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea or seen the movie, you know that squid have a beak. Uh, they have like two shelled things. they like this. Ah! And uh, for their mouth, and they have very, very highly structured and complex eyes, both the squid and the octopus. They have excellent vision for not being too smart. Actually, octopus are very, very smart. They actually have like taste buds on their um, on their feelers. And so they can actually, I, my wife read a book on octopus. It says they can taste themselves so they know not to eat themselves, I guess. But, you know, octopus are super duper smart and they tend to, uh, they're very good escape artists. So you got to make sure that uh, that their um, tanks are closed at night because they will get out and they'll go walking across uh, the ground and get into another tank and, and have dinner. So you got to watch out for those guys. Super, super smart. Squid can also be very, very big. They found some that are like 40 feet long on very deep waters. They usually only wash up if they're dead and they're disgusting at that point. Moving on to the echinoderms. The echinoderm, that means scaly or hard skin, scaly skin. Uh, a few characteristics about them. They have five or more arms. Um... They have a fantastic water vascular system. They have a little port on the top of them, which is hard to see on a really tiny starfish like this one. But if you get a good size one, you'll see a little a little hole in the top that helps regulate inside and outside water pressures and whatnot. That also is what they use to push water down their arms and to their tube feet to create pressure so they can like stick on to things. Um, Pretty cool. I've dissected those in college. I usually don't get to do stuff like that. So anyway, their vascular system, the, where they put bring in water and then they push it out, helps to regulate pressure and even all the way down to things like their tube feet. They have a, a middle section called the central disc, and then they have scaly skin. So we've got some uh, different uh, examples of that. You've got a uh, starfish, and you're going to see the video of several different kinds, and they can have lots and lots and lots of legs. Um, there's another one called the sea cucumber, which I'll send you a video about. And I basically think of them like sea turds. They basically look like like a log with uh, five part symmetry. There's sea urchins. Sea urchins are, are these guys here. This is a sea urchin shell. I was fascinated by these when I was a kid. You hold them up to the light, you can see all these little holes. That's where all their tube feet stick out, and then they'd have all those spines all over the place. 
So uh, I always remember picking up these shells at like SeaWorld or whatnot, but not really knowing what it was. I just knew it was cool. There's a little animal that would have lived inside of this shell. Its tube feet stick out and it has a bunch of spikes on top that would move around. I dissected one of these in college as well. Um, sand dollars. They're related to starfish. You can see a five-part symmetry here in that. Again, you can hold it up to the light and see a bunch of little holes. That's where all their tube feet uh, stick out. If you've ever seen a real living sand dollar, they're very, very interesting. You can see all their tube feet. On the bottom in the middle is where their mouth pore is. You know that that's the, the bottom and then the other side is the top. And they burrow in the sand and feed with their little feelers sticking out. Uh, other things, sea lilies and uh, brittle stars, etc. They're very fun to find at tide pools. They're kind of, you know, brightly colored and whatnot. Definitely suggest that you spend some time if you ever go to an aquarium again or you go to tide pools that you check that kind of stuff out. Going over to the Echinoderm page in our handouts. Again, we can use some of this stuff to help us. Um, do some of the lab stuff, though I don't think we're doing any labs on echinoderms this year. Um, go down to the bottom with the picture here. Uh, there's its little uh, its anus, but then there should be on the top uh, a little port. There's its, it's called the stone canal, and the sieve plate. Um, so it sucks in water in this area, and then you can see the internally it'll push all that water out down each arm to the tube feet. And though they look like they're pretty hard, they actually can move those things quite a bit. They can dislodge as well, and we already know that if something's attacking them, they can ditch an uh, arm or a leg and still be okay. As long as that central disc stays mostly intact, they can regrow the stuff that they had to let loose of to stay alive. Anyway, um, there's that. That should be enough for you to fill in your stuff. Again, the videos will be more interesting. I'll try to keep them short. And all I want you to do is, is view them because there's stuff in there growing up in the valley here that, that you won't get to see very often. So uh, just enjoy them, but give them a look, please, okay? I'm going to send this out on Wednesday. Um, you're going to do the reading on the other invertebrates Thursday, Friday. So by the time Monday rolls around, that's when I want you to have like looked at all that stuff. Okay, so take your time on that. There's no hurry. By Monday the 11th, you'll be coming in for a lab on worms. Have that stuff filled in and have those videos watched. Okay, that's all for now. Uh, I hope to um, uh, see you. I'll see you soon for lab stuff, and uh, you can look at my box of shells.